Assalamu alaikum, dear guys, myself from Madison. Uh, I am the lecturer in the University of Lahore. Today, uh, we are going to discuss about electroencephalogram. What is electroencephalogram? Uh, electroencephalogram is also known as EEG and uh, proper, uh, popularly is known as brain waves, which represents the electrical activity of the brain. Uh, the main parts of the brain are the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brainstem, and the thalamus. And thalamus is present between midbrain and hemispheres. As we know that our brain uh, is divided into two uh, longitudinal hemispheres. So here is a uh, diagram of brain which explains about the different parts of brain and uh, also the different functions of the brain. Like uh, I know that our frontal lobe uh, is most commonly known for personality, behavior, problem solving, planning, and emotions. And uh, the periosteal lobe is uh, known for speech and language area. So in brain, uh, every part of the brain consists of different uh, uh, areas of uh, emotions or like uh, speech or like memory and uh, vision. All the five senses are controlled by uh, our brain. So. It is the brainstem and spinal cord of all the signals uh, through motor neuron go from this brainstem and spinal cords to our body and uh, give some movement to our uh, tongue, our different parts. So next, the cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres separated by a longitudinal fissure across which there is a large connective band of fibers known as the corpus callosum. Okay. And uh, those people who are right-handed, uh, their whole work is controlled by left hemisphere and those people who are left-handed, their whole work is controlled by right hemisphere. The outer surface of the cerebral hemisphere is known as the cerebral cortex is composed of neurons. And um, as we know, neuron is a basic element, basic component of uh, the signal transcription. And neuron is also known as gray matter in convoluted patterns and separated into regions by fissures, which is also known as sulci. Beneath the cortex lie nerve fibers that lead to other parts of the brain and the body, which is known as white matter. So physiologically, uh, brain controls our processes, thought processes, external stimuli generates, and uh, also a signal into surrounding parts of the brain. And maybe uh, we can record all of these, um, you know, electrical signals and uh, respondings by using surface electrodes or by using scalp electrodes. And when we record their uh, electrical stimuli, so this process is known as electroencephalogram. The brain process, uh, processes the data with other layers of information to come up with an optimized response for every moment of an organism life. So uh, if a person uh, who is living uh, a healthy life or an abnormal life, their every moment of uh, life controlled by their brain. There is not a single um, part or a moment uh, which haven't controlled by that person's brain. So brain control, our five senses impact whole body of a person. So these are the different parts which control uh, different areas of our, uh, you know, like personality or our personality trait. Like frontal lobe, frontal lobe mostly known for motor control, concentration, planning, problem solving, and speech, and also some part of smell. And uh, when I'm going to say for parietal lobe, parietal lobe mostly known for touch and pressure, taste, body awareness, and temporal lobe, temporal lobe is for hearing, facial recognition. And when I'm going to say occipital lobe, it's for VN, and uh, cerebellum is for coordination. Uh, like whenever you met some person, so uh, the bond between you and that person, the coordination between you guys it all is controlled by cerebellum. And there is some part uh, which lies on uh, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, and parietal lobe is, known for, is specifically uh, present for language and reading. And this part is present on the left hemisphere of brain. So, here is a picture uh, which states our every single uh, part which is present in my uh, body, which is present in your body, has a specific uh, 
brain uh, area brain portion which control uh, that part which give him some uh, neurology neurological uh, movements or also uh, stimulus that part also provide some electrical signal to that part so uh, if some person want to move uh, his thumb uh, his right thumb so uh, the part on his uh, left hemisphere of that portion will gonna uh, create some electrical signals and i can uh, understand i can also evaluate that signals by using eeg okay uh, the scalp eeg is an average of the multifarious activities of many small zones of the cortical surface beneath the electrode so uh, whenever uh, we are place electrodes on the brain of uh, of a body of a person uh, it actually what he does uh, he mark some area and in in under that area which part uh, provide electrical signals uh, suppose i am moving my right hand so the part of my brain which control the right hand it's going to uh, you know like um, provide some electrical stimulus so from that part I'm specifically i'm going to get some signals okay it's not like our whole brain is going to give me some signals it's like whenever i'm doing some movements i'm doing some exercises so in uh, doing some exercises those parts who, uh, who are uh, using some energy is controlled by my brain and those uh, areas of the brain will gonna give me some stimulus so several channels of the eeg are recorded simultaneously from various locations on the scalp of comparative analysis of activities in different regions of the pain uh so it's not like i'm gonna uh, you know like uh, place some scalp electrodes on the uh, surface of my brain and uh, after that i'm gonna Uh, catch some signals from that specific area i don't know uh, which specific area control uh, a person's right hand so that's why i have to uh, place several channels of the eeg so that i can uh, easily locate the area from where i am getting the signals so uh, how we can do that we can do that by comparative analysis of the activities of pain so it's like uh, the electrodes placement of uh, a traditional eeg which we can see in any scientific lab where uh, different signal conditioning or uh, different thought processes are going on so uh, these electrodes are placed like 10 20 ratio 10 uh, 20 indicates that the electrodes along the midline are placed at the 10% 20% 20% then again 10% from nation to indian distance so it's like if i am starting from uh, uh, my nation point and going towards my indian indian point so from that point to that point uh, 10% of electrodes will gonna place over here 20% 20% 20% and then again 10% of the electrodes are gonna place on the occipital lobe the other series of electrodes are also played at similar fractional distance of the corresponding reference distances so it's not like uh, the electrodes are gonna uh, place randomly all of the electrodes are gonna place at some di uh, fractional distance from each other okay so it's like this at uh, at the nation point there are three electrodes then again there are five 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 and then again three electrodes so this is the ratio 10% 20% 20% 20% and again 10% electrodes are present on the scalp of a human person the inter electrode distance are equal along any anterior posterior or transverse line and electrode positioning is symmetric so uh, as uh, i have already said the distance between uh, the electrode is uh, along anterior posterior or transverse line is gonna same it's like a, a symmetrical or like a crystal lattice as we have uh, we know in different uh, materials so uh, here is a picture of brain uh, which tell me about the cerebrum cerebrum is the part which consists of four uh, five nodes and then there is cerebellum and then after that there is brain stem so if i'm going to getting some uh, eeg only from central part of the brain so that is eeg is going to like uh, uh, this waveform which is in 
black shell and if i am going to uh, getting some eeg in parietal uh, lobe so it's in uh, mustard shell and then in temporal it's in blue shade and in frontal it's in red shade and uh, this graph is placed uh, with respect to time typical eeg instrumentation settings used are low pass filtering and 75 hertz so uh, a low pass filter is a filter which removes frequency which is below 75 hertz so we are using a low pass filtering at 75 hertz so it means i am only getting the frequency above than 75 hertz recording at 100 microvolt per centimeter and uh, that signal will be recorded at 100 volt uh, 100 microvolt per centimeter and 30 millimeter per second for 10 to 20 minutes over 8 to 16 simultaneous channels so it means uh, we have placed around 10 uh, channels on the uh, on a single person's brain and we are using eeg for 10 to 20 minutes so that we can uh, record some uh, stimulus from that person's uh, brain signal and invasive method also exists known as electrocorticography so far we have discussed uh, a non invasive method uh, where we have to place electrodes over the scalp not inside the uh, scalp and over the brains um, you know like uh, surface so an invasive method also is known as electrocorticography special eeg techniques include the use of needle electrodes and nasopharyngeal electrodes needle electrodes are those electrodes whenever i have to get some uh, um, signal or some response or some stimuli uh, from single motor neuron or from single smup so from that part i have to use needle electrodes so uh, as now i have to place those electrodes on over brain so that we can also use needle electrode and nasopharyngeal electrode but mostly nasopharyngeal electrodes are used for electrocorticography so uh, how does uh, this work it record uh, the e ecog from an exposed part of the cortex and the use of intracerebral electrodes like this in this diagram uh, we have used nasopharyngeal electrodes uh, at the exposed cortex of brain. EEG signals exhibit several patterns of rhythmic or periodic activities. It consists of four uh, various patterns, delta waves, th theta waves, alpha waves, and beta waves, and also gamma waves. So delta waves uh, are those wave, uh, waveforms who has the frequency of zero to four hertz. And these waveforms are associated with deep sleep dreaming. Uh, it's like when a person is uh, sleeping uh, soundly and he's like having dreams. So on that occasion, when I have to do EEG of that person, I'm gonna get delta waveforms. And uh, somehow it may contain theta waveforms too. And theta waveform is, uh, has the frequency of four to eight hertz and are predominantly produced in hippocampus. Uh, so uh, it's like when a person uh, is awake and it's absent-minded. It's not like present on that, um, you know, like uh, place. It's not like he's in his uh, actual mind. He's not doing something. So at that point, we are gonna get theta waveforms. So these are the delta waveforms, and uh, below there are theta waveforms. Next is alpha wave. Alpha wave has a frequency of 8 to 13 hertz. And uh, these are the first waves to be observed when a person is uh, like uh, doing something. They are significantly pronounced while eyes closed in occipital lobe. It's like uh, I'm totally awake. I'm uh, totally in my, uh, you know, like uh, mind perception and I'm doing meditation. So it's not like I'm not moving uh, my muscles. I'm not moving my uh, limbs. Uh, I'm uh, sitting still and uh, I'm just thinking something or I haven't thinking anything. So at that point, I'm going to get alpha waveforms. And beta waveforms are associated with muscle contractions and their frequency is from 14 to 13 hertz. Uh, whenever I have to do uh, some movements, some exercises, I'm going to get beta waveforms. And it represents arousal and a practice of strongly engaged mind. It's like if a person uh, is solving puzzles, he, he's uh, then I'm going to uh, go for EEG. 
then I'm going to get beta wave forms. So uh, the upper image is for alpha wave forms and the below image is for beta wave forms. Last one is gamma wave forms. And gamma wave is from 30 to 100 hertz. These waves are reported to be associated with perception. Like primarily when two senses are involved. As we know, uh, uh, there are two kinds of person who only concentrate on one thing they are doing. And there are other kind of person who also uh, listen some music and they are doing something and they are thinking something. So those person who are involved using their two senses, uh, as we know that we have five senses. So from that five person, uh, that five senses, they are using two senses. Uh, so at that point, we are gonna get some gamma waveforms. It's like if a person is uh, concentrating on something and also listening to the music, or if a person is eating and also listening to the music. So these are some examples of the uh, gamma waveforms. So high frequency beta waves appear as background activity, intense and anxious subjects. If a person uh, who is tense, who is having some tension in the life and is anxious about something, and at that point, I'm going to go for uh, doing the EEG. So the beta waveforms are going to appear in his background. It's not like beta waveforms uh, is upfront. It's like the alpha waveform is upfront, but beta waveform may appear in, at some points. So if a person is in depression or absence of the normal expected rhythm in a, cert, uh, in a certain state of the object, so it could indicate abnormality. So uh, it's like it may uh, uh, switching from alpha to beta waveform abruptly or from uh, beta to theta waveform abruptly. Uh, if a person is awake and uh, he's having depression and he's showing some theta waveform, so it means he's uh, not fit, he's abnormal, uh, his uh, state of mind is not good. So the presence of delta or theta waveforms in a wakeful adult may be considered to be abnormal. So uh, delta or theta waveform also known as slow waveforms of the EEG. So if a person having delta or theta waveforms uh, in a wakeful adult may be considered as abnormal. So focal brain injury and tumors lead to the abnormal slow waves in the corresponding regions. So it means uh, if a person having delta or theta waveforms, uh, it may uh, proceed towards, uh, it may have brain injury at some point or may have a tumor. So that's why he's getting delta or theta waveforms whenever he's awake and he's doing something. Unilateral depression is also known as left right asymmetry. If a rhythm uh, could indicate disturbances in cortical pathways, so it means we haven't placed uh, electrodes of EEG properly. So uh, the distance between left right um, uh, intra electrodes is not equally good or the distance between from neon to en is not properly placed. So that's why we are getting some unilateral depression or we are getting some dip, uh, disturbance in our EEG sick waveform. So spikes and chop waves could indicate the presence of epileptogenic regions in the corresponding parts of the brain. So suppose if a person uh, having a normal uh, EEG waveform and abruptly it uh, take over to the other uh, waveform so it's like its uh, state of mind is convert uh, is con uh, you know like uh, moving from one epileptogenic region to the other epileptogenic region so it's like this if a person is eye blinking so uh, his waveform is gonna like this and after that is abruptly converted to the another part it's like there is no uh, proper contact or it's like uh, the electrodes who are placed over its uh, scalp are now go, have a bad contact. So uh, if a person is swallowing and his EEG is gonna like this, but if uh, I'm gonna get some bad reference after some time, so his EEG is gonna, uh, maybe there is a disturbance or maybe there is a epileptic disease. So, uh, if a person who's is having epilepsy onset, so at that point, his EEG is not gonna uh, like readable. You are not gonna uh, find something, um, you know, like diagnostic or uh, good to find out something uh, present over there. So you are not gonna uh, get theta waveform or alpha waveform or beta waveform or uh, gamma waveform 
uh, you will not be able to distinguish between these waveforms whenever he is switching or not switching. So, uh, in epilepsy, if a person who is having epilepsy, his uh, EEG signal is gonna like this. EEG signal may be used to study the nervous system. It also used for to monitor sleep stages and also for biofeedback and control for brain computer interfacing for detection or diagnosis of epilepsy, confusion, dementia, and other brain disorders. Uh, it's an example uh, of um, controlling uh, for brain computer interfacing. Uh, as we also know, uh, uh, known Stephen Hawking, Dr. Stephen Hawking, uh, we know that uh, he won't able to move his hands or uh, you know limbs. So uh, what they do, uh, they use, uh, they make a wheelchair which can be controlled by his brain. So they do uh, brain computer interfacing so that he can uh, move from one place to another place by using uh, his brain signals. EEG signals also used in, in, also used in encephalitis like swelling of the brain and other infections, brain tumor and head injuries, evaluation of the potential of recovery from trauma, evaluation of the periods of unconsciousness. Evaluation of the brain activity during surgery under general anesthesia, we may go for EEG evaluation of the comatose patients by evaluating or rolling out brain death. So what does uh, an EEG is look like? So first of all, I have to get some uh, signal acquisition from my brain or from spinal cord. After that, I have to provide this to a signal processing unit. And that signal processing unit consists of um, feature extraction and then pattern recognition. Like it's, uh, if whether it's alpha waveform or beta waveform or theta waveform. And after that, I have to provide this to the control system. And when I'm providing to the control system, I'm getting some feedback. I'm getting some, uh, you know, like um, waveforms. And if I, I, I want to do some brain computer interfacing, I will provide to the, uh, some, uh, you know, like uh, prosthetics or uh, I'm gonna provide to the some uh, wheelchair like um, they have done in the process of uh, Stephen Hawking. So after that, I can get, I can get some feedback, and after getting some feedback, we can uh, make a robotic a robot which can be controlled by EEG or which can be controlled by a person brains. So thank you. That's all from my side.